reInvent is over, and it has done to my voice what generative AI has done to AWS's entire product roadmap this year. Now, in five minutes or less, the most important things that have come out from AWS this week. Taylor Swift has been huge this year. She was from 1989. DB2, a database from IBM, is six years older than she is, and now, that's right, you can get it in RDS. There are 50 different things called Amazon Q that were announced. They're slapping it everywhere, like GitHub does Copilot, and SageMaker does the word SageMaker. One of them is Q Code Transformation, which will take your code and update it for modern security practices and for legacy runtimes, which is great as long as it's using Java. If not, crickets. One enterprise launched, which is a hand scanner for employees for access control. Amazon is a big believer that every employee is basically a peasant with their handout, so to them, it makes sense. S3 Express One Zone launched, which is a new storage class, which is not for you. If you believe otherwise, you have to convince me first. Spoiler, pretend it's not there, 95% of you will be happier for it. Cost Optimization Hub launched, a single place where you can get all of your recommendations for your expensive AWS bill in one place. Also they wound up fixing the billing console's biggest problem, which is every time you click on Cost Explorer, it goes to a new tab for no apparent reason. You can ask CloudWatch what the hell is going on in your environment, and presumably it'll tell you if generative AI worked, which at AWS, it doesn't. Graviton 4 was announced because just like I don't know when to stop taking things too far, neither does AWS. They launched a new thin client, which you can use with only with Amazon Workspaces, which will be coming soon to a suspicious office fire near you. Observability is a problem. You get better insight with more data, but that turns the haystack you're looking for the needle in even bigger. What's the solution to this? Chronosphere has approached this from a very different perspective. Get signal from noise, understand exactly what's going on, and not break the bank doing it. Learn more. Visit my friends at Chronosphere and be sure to tell them that I sent you in a horse raspy croak. Elastic throughput for EFS shows up, which basically scales up, scales down, and sneaks in a hidden charge every time you wind up touching anything on EFS. Careful with that one. CloudFormation learned about GitHub and GitLab and Bitbucket, but not CodeCommit because that service isn't real. It's a farce. Security Hub, finally, after five years, got multi-region and multi-account support, which is totally an announcement worth holding for reInvent. Awesome. Aurora Limitless Database has been launched, and that is approximately the fifth way to scale Aurora that doesn't work. The free tier has an API, so first-time users of AWS can figure out when they're about to be charged money, and all they have to do is write a bunch of code and configure half a dozen services to run it for them. Simple, simple. There's anomaly detection in CloudWatch logs, because you don't know when to shut up, but suddenly your logs did usually means trouble. Hopefully it works. There are 50 different generative AI announcements that are all in preview, all of which are a generation or two behind of what OpenAI is currently shipping in general availability. At least they said something. Repost private launch, so only your employees can use a given forum, unlike regular repost, which is only used by AWS employees, sporadically. You can now put a GraphQL API on any MySQL or PostgreSQL database so you can turn any database query into a code-bound murder mystery. Speaking of murder mysteries, AWS Detective for IAM Investigations is up, so now it can finally find the person who crapped my pants. Console to code, so we can finally use the AWS console and not lie about it as far as IAC goes. ClickOps has improved. And finally, Emily Freeman, AWS's head of community engagement, has left AWS which is just an incalculable loss whose magnitude I'm not even sure AWS realizes. Now I'm going to go pass out and you can get back to work.